the most fly, most gorgeous. Freaka is a baby. Let's go. The thrill of victory comes with the agony. Don El Freako, that's that was me. That's Don Rich. Come on. Clinton Place at, at the Papa Rican store. Papa Rican store that's right there on top of Megwin Grumman. The Papa Rican store that was right there off of um, Crane. North North. Yeah. Y'all know. We were talking every corner Rican store around the world. If you got a corner Rican store, like places like Orlando, it's beautiful. Real, 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 real man shit. Real talk. Well, we gonna talk over the music, cause my man parked over there. Yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna tell you. You gotta go ahead and get that shit going. <laughs> yeah, that's where you at. How I told you, my boy gonna be tall, baby. My All right. Tall, baby. So, peace and blessings, everybody. Welcome to episode three of the Freaker Show, where we document the story of MCs, and we have one MC in particular who has a story that you need to know to understand the history of Brick City Hip Hop. And we sitting with my man, Future Star, something very special to come. We got Sun Su, Desert Set. One of your favorite MCs that you didn't even know he was already in front of you, you just had to check him out. All right. So, let's talk about it. Talk about creativity and what what was the creative side of the bricks that made the bricks special? You know, everybody always screams punchlines and metaphors, right? No, I said everybody always screams punchlines and metaphors. But if you really take time to think about it, no, brothers was creating their own styles. Brothers were, brothers were speaking to the people like, yo, hey, you, 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 this is me. Don't nobody sound like this. With the punchlines, with the metaphors. Nobody was trying to sound the same. And that's why I say the era of punch in the mouth rap. Like you couldn't sound like nobody. You couldn't say nobody rhymes, especially around cats that was really in the hip hop. And I don't think nobody understand that. And right now, I don't, it's not against the youth. Don't get it twisted, y'all. What I'm saying is what we come from, you know, is something, you know, different. But, you know, I fucks with y'all. You know me anyway. So even to this day, I notice that a lot of young brothers got their own type of style, you know what I mean? Like real talk, and they be spitting off their own, you know, how they feel, like young brother QB, you know what I'm saying? Real talk, the young brother QB, and um, the brother Corleone, his son, he, he, you know what I mean? These are some of the young brothers that, you know, really, they doing it, they got their own style, you know, and, that's what it was really about, having your own style. It was, that's what it, you can say as many punchlines and metaphors that, that you want, but if, 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 if you ain't saying it with originality, you really ain't being recognized. You couldn't sound like nobody. That was one of the main things that went on, you know? All right. But creativity has always been the beginning and end of hip hop from the door. Cause no matter where you are from, you carried the city on your back. Why is Nork's back so wide, but nobody's carrying it? Because Nork branches out. I'm going to tell you, like I was saying before in one of our prior interviews, Nork traveled through the penal system. Patterson traveled through the penal system. You understand? Jersey City traveled through the penal system. You know what I mean? Trenton traveled through the penal system. Camden traveled through the penal system. So everyone got a chance to meet Nork dudes. You know, Nork dudes tend to dominate, and it's not a no bullshit. Brooklyn dudes love Nork dudes. Like, it's real, like, real shit. So... What I mean is, it was an influence. I, we, I love spread wide. 
it spread very, very wide. And it went out of state. Newark really, you know, and when you meet a Newark dude, not saying every dude from Newark solid, you know what I mean? Because I can't say that. But one thing I, I can say is that there's a lot of Newark brothers and sisters everywhere. You know what I mean? And I've come to run into them going places. Bubbles, and what I mean by that is bubbles from Jersey. You know, so that's why. But we don't have the people in position like they were at one time to be able to carry it. Now that they realize what the whole plan was when people were coming towards them to get them to do an executive movement. So them being, you know, in the mind frame they were in, you know, certain decisions were made and it wasn't for the betterment of who they say they love so much when at that time if they would have made the right choices then right now they would be them same people that they can't really rap about because that's not their status executive ceo when it comes to the music you can't say that ain't what you want to be when you're a ceo and everything else but you're still funding everything else for music it don't add up you know so that's just me speaking from the top. You know what I mean? Down to the bottom. All right, I feel that. I feel that. DJ, let me ask you a question. Originality is something that you know because you break records and you spin them. When originality became less a statement in hip hop, how hard has it been to spin records? or to carry a crowd using the lack of creativity to differentiate the sound for each record? The, the only thing that would be difficult about that is that the times has changed. The, like what a lot of music that they have out right now, it's a certain audience that wanna hear that shit. Like uh, maybe some of the stuff that they say, oh, he don't make any sense, or he just, like the, this one with the bird, you know, you know, like, it, it's dumbed down. Like, there's a whole dumbed down, a dumbed down group of listeners is not gonna wanna hear some lyrical shit, cause it's gonna cause them to think. Uh -huh. It's difficult, you have to find your audience, you know, like with Heritage Hip Hop and a bunch of other platforms. We have a hip hop link, a hip hop platform, so it's easy for us to break records, you know what I mean? And I'm pretty sure for like that type of music too has a certain system set up for it to be, you know, number one to them. You know, uh, somebody's breaking somebody's breaking records in, in that genre. It, it, it's a genre within the genre, but somebody's breaking records, a shit we never even heard before. You know, it could be some little local kid. You know, and um, Instagram, TikTok, and all the shit these kids be using, they could become a, a hit overnight. You know, so. It just all depends on who you fuck with, you know what I mean? Like, who, who you dealing with, you know? All right, so how about this, though? We're going to talk about Built For This, the new single by D-Rich. We got to talk about it, you know what I'm saying? We talked about the album song. You said you're feeling the yeah, song, right? I love this song. All right, so let's talk song. about this. Since we're talking about originality and feel, what was the feel of the song when you first heard it, and where did it take you? It oh, for me? Yeah, yeah, for you. It took me back like on some 90s shit. The beat, the, even the girl singing the hook, it, you know what I'm saying? It, it pulled you in, you know? And then, if anybody don't know Free, they know he gonna put that sauce on it. You know what I mean? And, and with the sauce, it just make the whole song even better, because, like, I know his style, you know? But, um, it's definitely, and then I thought, I was like, yo, this is a radio joint. This, this could be on the radio. You know, this is, this is a radio catcher right here, radio, you know, but yeah, it made me feel good, bro. It's on my playlist now. <laughs> Peace. 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 Now, my question with that is, Built For This is a song that's not very Jersey, but it's very musical. I'll tell you what I mean when I say not very Jersey. That's right, that's right. New Jersey has been put into a box so much that anything, that's hot that comes from Jersey, they don't say it has a Jersey sound. But if you listen to the history of hip hop music, that song is like Drew Down, Rapping Forte, Too Short, E-40. And if you know anything about Cali music, Cali music is universal. How are you bringing universal equity to New Jersey hip hop? Well, 
First of all, like I said, it's about my own style. I ain't trying to sound like nobody. I'm not gonna say what you say. And I tell people a lot of times, it ain't what you say, it's how you say it. Like you can yell at a person and they're, 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 they're look at you like, man, get the fuck out of my face. But you talk to a person and, and, and articulate your words, you know what I mean, and, and you know, they're, they're, they're dig your dialect. From that point on, you can continue to further the conversation and they'll understand you more. You know what I mean? So it's about being, having clarity. It's about being, you know, like funky. Like you got to have club music in you. See me, if, if you listen to what I'm saying and what I, how I do it, and how I style it and how I lay the, lay the verses and the vocals out, when you listen to everything, it's, 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 it's a mix of all the things that came from Dade City, Florida, and North New Jersey, and then my travels throughout life. Being around all my Caribbean friends, being around, you know what I'm saying, my family, being around my friends, meeting other people along the way, and right now, even dealing with just what, from this, I take things in it. Here comes another style, here comes another verse, here comes another song. So, honestly, it's about being original, laying it out, and telling the truth, though. See, that's the thing, but making it sound so, easy for you to understand you know i ain't here to be complicated about it i'm just gonna tell the truth to you and it is what it is we ain't got to argue and debate about it so i'm, I'm gonna make it sound good and put the seasoning all on it spice it up you know what i'm saying that's what i do i'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I, I chef i cook you know but that's what you want to say you know i'm a don of this real talk luck fan baby all right i like that so let's take this to the next level then because you talked about Universal sounds. Mm -hmm. I want both of y'all opinion on this one. I'm gonna start with you. I think when we ask what is the difference between the MC and the rapper, I think the one thing we sleep on is how you hit other territories. Even the Bible say like a man is a man is a, a, is known as one who travels the world and uses it to gain a bigger perspective of life, not only through his own eyes, right? And if you haven't rocked in different territories or you haven't been influenced by the sounds of different territories, you really don't know your ear. You really know what your, you only know what your ear has been told to hear. How has traveling or hearing music from different territories elevated your ear and your creativity? Um, I could sum it up to like being impressed with another person and their style kind of helps you, you know, add source to your to your own style. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like some lyrical encouragement or or flow encouragement. However, this in the individual artist pushes out their art. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, like character builds. Like if you have a character, you have a good voice. You know what I mean? Like. You never forget distinct lyricists, you know what I mean? Like uh, Midi and them, the old 50, old 50 they, don't, they sound way, we all from the same town, but everybody sound different. Mm -hmm. Old 50, they sound different, they don't sound like nobody. You know, Brenton Rascals didn't sound like nobody. You know, um, the outsiders don't sound like nobody, yeah. except for them, mm -hmm. you know? So, even when you go like to the South, you go to the South, you, you run into lyrical dudes, it's lyrical, got that hop to it. You got the storytelling, you know, it, it's all supposed to help you boost and have confidence in your own style and add extra flavor to you. When you go and you hear other people from different states or different towns or uh, overseas, you know, Germany rappers and shit like that. Like, Switzerland got a crazy hip hop scene right now and them niggas is all boom back. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I hope I answered the question. Right? <laughs> peace, peace. I, I, and hold, put the camera back on the brother real quick. You see, now, see, the reason I love it is because the brother able to express himself the way he sees it, you know? And, <clears throat> pardon me, that's respect, that's love, you know what I'm saying? Special guest on the Freaky Show. This is the Red Heritage Hip Hop. This is Rosan Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu is, is, is not only an MC, but he's a DJ. But at the same time, he's a big, firm supporter of the Govmatic movement and all the brothers. Run Dog, Wayne Danger, Swan Styler. You understand what I'm saying? Freaky is he deep. The brother Govmatic, rest in peace, King. The Brick Mob movement, the Lost Tribe movement. You know what I'm saying? Anything. You know what I mean? And, 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 and 
it's real, you know. So the brother been around for a long time and, and he's sitting here with me. Every time I'm, I come up, I either text brothers or I give brothers calls. You know what I mean? So the brothers that answer to the call, this is, this is, you know. So I just wanted to say that and I appreciate you, brother. I, I really do. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And see, this is all, this is a, a circle because they influenced my style. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they, Brick Mob, Lost Tribe, them as a collective inspired me. Mm -hmm. You know, to be on my Buddha Monk shit from Desert Set. Desert Set is like seven, eight of us, you know? Mm -hmm. But, and everybody got their own inspirations. So, you know, my brothers in my group, they all, you know, got their expressions of other rappers to them. But I was always Brick Mob because it's just like the lyrics. The beats was crazy. It made you bop your head. I'm a bop your head, nigga. I'm like, I gotta, you know what I mean? Like, you know, so I said all that to say, like, the question that you originally asked, it's like, it's, it's this too, right? It's, he, he's a big part of my uh, growth in hip hop, you know, and period, you know. <laughs> and I used to manage his son. And it, and so it was in the dance, but like we was always connected some type of way, you know, nephew, you know what I mean, like, always connected, but this is part of who helped me grow and develop as a MC, a spitter, I only consider myself a rapper, but you know, whatever, but yeah, that's deep. Alright, so I'm gonna ask you this, and we gonna walk off on this one. Life is a six degrees separation of many stories. We're being cheated in hip hop because so many stories are not being told. And that's the key to learning and the bastardization of lessons being taught. I was always the person who asked and when I used to go to church or go to school, they always talked about Christ and the 12 disciples, right? And I used to always ask the question, well, who are the 12 after the 12? They told me, shut up. They didn't want to talk to me about it. You know what I'm saying? And to keep it real, we always hear the same names, but who are the people who influenced or came after the main influenced people? Now that this books are being opened and the stories are being told, what is to be gained by the game from knowing who you are, what your story is, and how will it influence others? Question again, because I just now I had to went somewhere, and I, I got that. There's just the ending. Repeat that ended the ending. Now that the books are being open, mm -hmm. what advantage will the game get by knowing who you are, your story, and what legacy will it leave for people who follow it, knowing your game oh, story? Well, first of all, it's for just everywhere that I've been. See. I have, I've had the pleasure of living places, you know, from up north to down south to out west, you know what I mean, southwest, you know what I mean, and I got a lot of friends, a lot of family, a lot of supporters, so the first thing that I, everybody got to say is I, I never change, I'm the same dude, I will talk to you, kick it with you. But if I love you, I, I, I get in your ass and I talk to the brothers about your ass. Because now we gotta get a plan together to figure out how to deal with your ass. So we love your ass. And, and, and now it's pause. It ain't your ass, but y'all know what I mean when I say this shit. So I'm that brother, the same brother that's gonna always show love to my brothers, that's gonna always deal with things that come from a point of saying, Bro, we done been through enough to know. Now, it's your choice to make a move and better yourself as a man, but at the same time, whenever you ready, we here to go ahead and help you build on whatever your idea is. You know what I mean? Same way brothers come together and put together, it's about a legacy. It's about being able to do something. Really come together, put a business together, and give all the proceeds to your kids, and make sure all the seeds are straight, and we just using whatever we need to make sure the production of what we're doing for the seeds continue to grow. 
but all them profits can't be touched by the founders of it, but they're all in the name of the seeds and the seeds can't touch them. It's something that's gonna grow for them. So that's the point. Generational wealth. Being able to generate that, being able to teach the youth how to learn this business. How because that's what everybody wanna do. They wanna do music. You know, or, or, or in some sports so they, they can do music and support their homeboys that's doing sports. And and you know, and, and now we got all these sponsorships going on right in the neighborhood. There's so many different gifts that we have. We out here in the streets, natural born hustlers, we're forced to be. So we become young CEOs on different levels, because there are levels to it. But the point is, we all deserve that shot. So that's my thing. I want to be known as the brother that gave everybody their fair shot. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, we love you. And I want brothers to know that much. Lux fam, love you. Freak, I love y'all. I always did. I'm always there for my people. For, for And anybody that know that, know that. Except when you get on my nerves, I don't want to be bothered. Y'all know how I am. But at the same time, I'll call you, I'll text you, i do whatever. Ever. But y'all know me. I ain't, I ain't changing on the bullshit. From the bridge to the sticks. From the bridge to the sticks. I need something to drink, man. The most fly, most gorgeous. Freak, I is a baby. Let's go. The thrill of victory. Hey. Comes with the agony of defeat